Well, if anyone on either side of the George Zimmerman murder trial was hoping to see emotion out of the accused, they have been sorely disappointed. For three weeks, he has been a courtroom stoic, stone-faced, even as his friends took the stand to support him, and equally unflinching today as the prosecution began closing arguments by labeling him a lying murderer. But the verdict is certain to bring plenty of emotion out of Sanford, if not from Zimmerman, than from the loved ones of Trayvon Martin and all those court watchers who see this as a test case of America's racial divide. Here's ABC's Matt Gutman with the very latest on the George Zimmerman trial. After 22 heated days in this Florida court, closing arguments in the murder trial of George Zimmerman finally got underway this afternoon. With the nation and victim Trayvon Martin's parents watching, lead prosecutor Bernie Della Rianda wasted no time invoking the victim. A teenager is dead. He is dead through no fault of his own. He is dead because another man made assumptions. A jury of six women will decide whether the former neighborhood watchman shot and killed the 17-year-old in February 2012 in self-defense or whether he is guilty of murder. The law talks about accountability and responsibility for one's actions. The fiery prosecutor urging the jury to find Zimmerman guilty. You rely on your God-given common sense. Suggesting Zimmerman lied about screaming for help that night. Why, why, why isn't it muffled down? Why, why is he able to yell if the defendant claims the victim was... How's he, how's he going to talk? Or is he lying about that? It was an emotional and at times theatrical performance by the prosecutor. Oh, he's skipping away. La, la, la. That's what he's claiming. But over the top for some court watchers, including the man who defended Casey Anthony. What did you make of the prosecution's closing argument? I thought it was poorly presented. I, I, I think that uh, Bernie de la Rionda is a better lawyer than that. He relied on his recollection of the inconsistencies as opposed to pointing them out and spoon feeding the jury for that. During his three hour closing, Della Rianda used back of his head PowerPoint slides, this faux mannequin, and Zimmerman's own words. Oh, I'm sorry, back there they said, are you following him? To try to convince the jury that Zimmerman went after Trayvon Martin simply because of the way he looked. When he profiled a 17 year old boy that had Skittles, he automatically assumed that Trayvon Martin was a criminal. And that's why we're here. He ripped into Zimmerman's credibility. Do you believe that there is an innocent man sitting over there right now? And again show jurors those pictures of Martin's dead body. This is one of the last photos that will ever be taken of Trayvon Martin. And that is true because of the actions of one individual the man before you, the defendant, George Zimmerman. Do you think he did a disservice to Trayvon Martin? I think Trayvon Martin deserved more. I, I think uh, the people of the state of Florida and, and the victim, Trayvon Martin, should have had a clear-cut presentation of the evidence that came out in this case. The inconsistencies spoon-fed to them laid out in some way other than sarcasm. Earlier in the day, Judge Deborah Nelson heard arguments from both sides over what charges the jury would be allowed to consider. The information uh, alleges that the defendant shot and killed the victim, that the victim was under the age of 18, uh, and child abuse must be, according to the third degree felony murder uh, instruction, defined. Oh my God. <clears throat> Just when I thought this case couldn't get any more bizarre, the state is seeking third degree murder based on child abuse? Is the court going to give this any serious contention or consideration? Because if so, we have a lot of talking to do. Manslaughter was an expected lesser charge. Third degree murder was not. This is outrageous. It's outrageous that the state would seek to do this at this time in this case. Ultimately, the judge ruled that the jury would be allowed to consider the lesser charge of manslaughter in addition to the charge of second-degree murder. Even if he is convicted of the lesser charge, Zimmerman could spend up to 30 years in prison. A continuation of tensions between West and Judge Nelson. The state is seeking this instruction as part of a larger scheme, another trick 
that the state is seeking okay. I, I because don't hear the word trick anymore in right. regards to these arguments, please. Earlier this week, West complained bitterly about the marathon hours both sides have been forced to keep in court. I'll see you uh, Judge, I'm not morning. physically able to keep up this pace much longer. It's 10 o'clock at night. We started this morning. We've had full days every day. Weekends, depositions at night. West also objecting to the judge's continued insistence that George Zimmerman answer the questions of whether or not he would take the stand. I, I object to that question. I think that's Mr. Overruled. Zimmerman. The court is entitled to inquire of Mr. Zimmerman's determination as to whether or not he wants to testify. Mr. Zimmerman, have you made a decision as to whether or not you want to testify in this case? No, not at this time. No. Okay. He keeps butting heads with the judge. What do you make of that? He's an excellent defense attorney, but he's gotten on the nerves of this judge, and it doesn't help his client for the judge not to like him. I think the saving grace is that the judge clearly likes uh, Mark O'Mara. They're playing sort of a good cop, bad cop. The so-called good cop of the defense team, Mark O'Mara, has appeared diplomatic throughout the trial. Would you say that this got personal between the attorneys and the judge? Yes. Well, be between the attorneys, I think that there's been some animosity. I think it's shown itself in the courtroom. I think with the judge, she does, she handles the courtroom very well. She does what she needs to do to put on a fair trial. I am concerned with some of the rulings and the outcropping from that, but I respect her rulings. Even as those theatrics continued in court, the city of Sanford is bracing for a verdict. The police chief says he's prepared for anything. What percentage of your police force is going to be ready in anticipation of whatever happens? Our entire police department. Everybody. There's, there's no vacations, there's no furloughs, unless you're, uh, you're off sick and you have to be physically off sick, you will be uh, working at some point. Even though race has only been mentioned in passing in court, Trayvon Martin's death has made this case a national flashpoint. Solidarity. Why do you think it is that people feel so strongly about this case? I think it's because of who's involved. I mean, you have the victim of this case is an unarmed African-American teenager, and the person who committed the crime is essentially a white male. Although he's biracial, he's essentially thought of and, and identifies as a white male. So given those dynamics, it becomes automatically a racial issue, even though we'll never find out if it really was you know, motivated at that point in time. Back in court, Zimmerman stared blankly ahead throughout the day, barely moving until this moment. The man before you, the defendant, George Zimmerman. The man who is guilty of second degree murder. Thank you. Tomorrow morning, it will be the defense's turn to try to persuade the jury one last time that George Zimmerman killed Trayvon Martin in self-defense. After that, his fate rests in their hands. Now, Bill, those six female jurors are likely to get a charging sheet like this one, giving them the possibilities of second-degree murder and manslaughter should they want to convict. That's what George Zimmerman has been so concerned about, say, his attorneys. It's why he's looked so detached in court. He knows his life is going to be permanently changed. His attorney says that if he's convicted, he'll spend the rest of his life possibly behind bars. And even if he's acquitted, he might spend the rest of his life in hiding, only a semi-free man.